Hey, Colossal Crew, how we doing? Before we start our visual interview with Koontz, please make sure you check out his music and follow the socials. Those will, of course, be available in the description for you. Uh, and just a little background on Koontz. He's a DMV rapper and songwriter out of PG County, Maryland, who refers to himself as a lyrical Basquiat. Versatile in both his bars and his sound, Koontz gave us the honor of letting us ask him a few questions about his life and his art, and we can't wait to share that with you today. Please make sure to check out his latest single, Talk To Me, available on all streaming platforms right now. And, as always, make sure to check us out on our socials, available in the description as well. That way you can find out a bit more about what we do here at Colossal Music Group. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. Yo, bro, what up? What's up with you, man? Hey, how's it going, man? <laughs> I'm good. I got endless sun on my face, God dang. <laughs> Well, how you doing, bro? I mean, yeah. Welcome, welcome to the Colossal Interview, man. We're psyched to have you, bro. I'm happy to be here. I was watching the Pat Brady interview the other day. I was like, oh, yeah, they, they real cool. <laughs> I'm glad I'm driving, too. Like, I'm over here on the road and whatnot. Hey, it's all cool. It's all oh, cool, it's man. All good, We're happy man. to have you here, bro. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, so what's the... uh? What's the past, you know, year been like for you? You put out, you put out some good music, man. I mean, you you saw my uh, my praise for sweet potato pie in our email, man. You know, both Alex and I love that track. I appreciate that. Uh, this past year just been a year of growth. I've been, uh, I don't want to say studying, but just trying to hone in my craft, not trying to force everything. Before mm -hmm. I used to try to like release things instantly, but you know, now I, I want to get things right you know i wanted to sound a certain way i want to bring myself always though so yeah yeah so how does like what, what is that what has that process been like for you like are there certain are there certain things you've done in the past year that have sort of helped you hone in on that creative yeah. process and sort of keeping that focus uh, i honestly started taking music more serious so actually like mm -hmm. buying a calendar planning things setting goals for certain songs you know uh you know, to get things done in a timely, you know, fashion. So, I mean, and creatively, it's just living life, you know, with COVID, it's given a lot of inspiration, a lot of time to think, which I felt yeah. like I didn't have before, so. Yeah. You know, every single artist that we've talked to has been like, yo, COVID has actually been a blessing for me. Like, it's it's really forced me to focus on my on my craft, on my process, and like, really hone in on, you know, those parts of my music that I really want to, that I really want to show and really want to portray. Yeah, I heavily agree. Like COVID, like I said, well, as far as time, it just made you reevaluate how you spent your time before. You don't have that excess, you know, activities you could do outside. So you think about, but well, what do I do when I'm alone? So it just yeah. started to spark a lot of things. Like, I feel like a lot of people started doing things they used to when they grew up. You know, I've seen a lot of people get back in gaming and things like mm -hmm. that. So, yeah, uh, it was a blessing in disguise. How did, uh, absolutely, how did COVID? So, uh, during, especially during the lockdown period where, you know, everyone was indoors, how did that impact, you know, your, your songwriting process, but also your recording process, the way you made your music? Um, were you making music from home before that anyway, or did that, that change the, the whole game for you? Uh, I was already making music from home, so it didn't impact it that much. But as far as, you know, creatively, initially, I didn't have anything because I really felt like I couldn't think. Hey, the whole world wasn't normal anymore. It was like trying to reinvent yeah. myself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I started reading a little bit. I read, uh, I can't even think of the author's name, but it's a book called The Artist's Way. And it talks about mm. taking yourself on a date. So I just used to go for walks a lot, like doing quarantine. Mm. That's why I can't wait till it heat up again. I'm going to go right back for my walks. <laughs> mm. <laughs> well, uh, we also saw that you dropped your video for What You Talking six days ago. Congrats on that, man. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. So what was the... Uh, what was the the creative idea behind that video was that all you was that did you get a videographer uh, for that that sort of gave you ideas no, it wasn't for it? on me 
I got a videographer, uh, Lost Film Studios. Uh, they work mm. with DreamWorks. I'm actually, I, it's spelled D R M W X, I believe that's how you spell it. But uh, you can visit their website, DreamWorks.com. But mm. I shot it with them. I, I, I had a set designer named Jais. She helped me with the wardrobe as well. And the model, her name Destiny. She she used to rap. I think she might start rapping again. She's really tough. But her rap name, okay. she go by Ransom. And yeah. It, it, the idea was a quarantine picnic, honestly. You know, very intimate, not doing too That's much. That's what it felt like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so <laughs> just just chilling, trying to make the best of what we have. So I'm happy people enjoyed it. I got a lot of good feedback from it. So I'm, I'm happy we all were able to bring the vision to life. That's what matters. Absolutely. That's what matters. Yeah, it's good to hear. Yeah. Deserved, deserved. Thank you. But so you're so since your Lavender Lane project, which dropped two years ago, if I'm right at this point, um, you dropped a few singles, Silly Watch, What You Talking, Sweet Potato Pie, and they all vary pretty heavily in their in their styles. Um, what what made you decide to switch it up between those tracks? What 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 was the inspiration behind that? Uh, just different moves during the week. Uh. <laughs> I, I know now, nowadays, you know, st- I feel like our styles are more combined. Like a lot of people rap, but also sing, you know, auto tune help a lot because it adds a yeah. different creative element, you know. Yeah. You know how they always say your voice is an instrument. So it just allows it to be an instrument, honestly. So some songs I just want to be more melodic. Sometimes I just feel like talking and rapping, you know, so yeah. whenever yeah. I go to the studio, whenever I decide to record, it's just like, well, what am I feeling? That's what I'm going to present the best, so. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that really impressed me is, I mean, on 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 some of your tracks, like Sweet Potato Pie, for example, your, I mean, your wordplay really stands out. Sean and I were talking about it before the interview. You know, your mm-hmm. wordplay yeah. really stands out, but when you shift your energy and your creative, your creative process towards a more singing track, you don't lose that songwriting process. It seems you, you you keep those bars even when you're singing, which I think is I really, really impressive. Really impressive. Yeah, I really appreciate. I, I try to say, you know, whether no matter how I present myself, I'm gonna try to say something. Like words mean something, so I gotta mm. still rap at the end of my day. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, we we, uh, we need more of that music today, man. Yeah. Appreciate <laughs> more that, music, you know. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sweet potato pie, man. I've been I've been listening to that for a minute now, man. Your wordplay in that, the lyricism. The, I mean, yeah, you, you saw the the my favorite part of it, the quote yeah. that I sent to you. Oh you know, man, that's such a hard line. Man, it was such a truthful line. Like, uh, shit happened. Yeah. Twenty twenty, no different. My granny lost some memories of me, then she died. How's that for a social distance? How's Six that feet for a deep, distance, ain't no social visits. When when I first said it. it I felt it, and I knew I was like, "Yeah, this is one of them ones." Yeah. Mm. But yeah. it, it's crazy how I even got to that point. Because if I think about, you know, my grandmother's passing, I would have never thought I could say something like that, you know. And being mm. seven mm. years removed right now, I think she passed in twenty thirteen. Well, eight going on eight. I just feel like wow. I, I've grown from that, you know. You know, I, I'm I'm sad about it, but I see how. I grew from it and became a better version of me that I probably wouldn't have access to, you know, had things went different. So Mm -hmm. I know life really is a lot of looking at things 2020. So not even 2020 last year, but, you know. Yeah. 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 Were you and and your grandma pretty close? Yeah, we were close. Uh, We we talked often. Uh, I spent a lot of summers with her growing up. So, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like on Lavender Lane and Glass Cellars, I kind of, you know, portray the fact that it's just like, you know, someone that you feel connected to and for her to pass, you know, with her in dementia and for her to feel like she forgot me. I understand it was a disease, but she knew certain people. So I just felt like yeah. that connection wasn't as strong. And at that time in my life, it just affected me a lot. Like mm-hmm. I fucked yeah. up a lot of my relationships and friendships just because I was trying to matter in people's world. Like, it, it's a whole lot. I really feel like I've grown a lot. Like, I'm over here giving yeah. it up like it's therapy and shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but nah. That's what this feels like, man. Yeah. 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 It's crazy, though. 
you spoke on glass ceilings. Um, mm -hmm. Another one of my favorite lines yours was, uh, my hardest lesson was me forgiving myself. And, yeah. you know, that's something that, that I feel like, you know, a lot of us go through of, you know, we're, we're stuck on, you know, this thing from the past of like, oh, damn, man, I just can't get over that. I can't, I can't forgive myself for what I've done. But, you know, once you finally achieve that, you know, that, that feeling of forgiving yourself and being like, yo, I mean, life happens, man. Like, you just got to yeah. keep growing from it. You're getting better. And yeah, I, I yeah. love that line, man. I, I appreciate that. Like, like you said, we do just got to, you know, life happens, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. You can't, you can't look at things. Yeah. It's, it's just crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. 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 I feel you. When, uh, when did you start feeling that music was a way for you to, to, to kind of express that? Did you start, how young were you when you started writing music? Uh, it was funny. <laughs> I was talking to somebody about this the other day. So growing up, like, yeah, I told you I had an interview with Pat. Mm. I, I liked his little sister. Like, we was around the same age. I know that sound wild now, but, you know, <laughs> I was young, too. Like, I yeah, remember yeah, probably, yeah. like, the, no, the it, second, third it. grade. I don't remember. But, like, so... I liked her and I made a freestyle rap song dissing him. And I think that was the <laughs> first rap I ever wrote was a diss. And it's crazy because I love battle rap to this day. So, oh my God. <laughs> I, I, it was always in me. So, yeah, th that's the first time I actually started writing. And then as I grew, I didn't do it too much. I started rapping again in middle school. My man's uh, D. And you know, we just kept it consistent. We 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 was a group too official. We got some stuff on YouTube, but yeah, it's it just stayed there. And then around after college, I took it more serious. I started to be like, all right, I think mm -hmm. I could rap. My music got better. My lyrics got better. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and now here we are. Now it's been a long process. It's been ten years, honestly. Like if I just mm -hmm. summarize when I said, okay, I'm gonna take it serious, like. Time flies. Yeah, man. No, for real. And you were talking about you, you and Pap. I mean, you guys go way back, it seems. Um, and, and you guys have worked together before. Um, we were listening to uh, your track together, uh, Black Widow, from mm -hmm. his project, cool. Rowdy. What's, what's, what was working together like, um, for, not only for that track, but in general? You guys obviously seem to have, uh, outside of that track, worked together a lot. You spent a lot of time together. What's that like? <laughs> me and Pop, we we could working with him he really be working so like he'll have like three four tracks just like all right you could get on this like he don't really care it's it's easy to work with him so like we we never linked in the actual studio that time we worked on that track uh well we just always be in two different areas because even back mm -hmm. back in the day like facebook days me and him did a track and you know he was at his studio at his friend's house i was at my friend's house so but it's always just sending tracks but it's always love like pop will send you a track with a with the quickness like he don't care his his tracks be cranking like he tough <laughs> yeah like like yeah. <laughs> he tough like he got this one we paid freestyle i want him to drop that so bad like <laughs> I, I, I i hope i don't ruin this shit but like my bad, bro, if I did, but that shit hard. Like, if he get played <laughs> in my notes, like, I probably played it at least 30 to 40 times. Like, I, I fuck with that song so, so crazy, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, when, when, we, were, uh, when we were getting in contact with him for the interview, he, like, he sent us at least three unreleased songs of his. And he was like, yo, check this unreleased shit out, man. Like, y'all are gonna yeah. love it. We're just like, bro, we didn't even <laughs> ask for this. Like, <laughs> going to a different... uh different area here um i saw in your your spotify bio that you call yourself a lyrical basket yeah and uh <laughs> i noticed noticed some similarities as well with uh the silly watch cover it kind of looks a lot like you know some of basquiat's old art um mm -hmm. so i was wondering sort of what the what the connection between you and and basquiat is uh me it's just I, I like Basquiat, and I feel like when it came to his artwork, he wasn't appreciated until after he passed, you know. Mm -hmm. People yeah. realized it, how to take in his artwork, and sometimes I think that's how I am with lyrics. Like, it, I, I say certain things, like, like I care about my words, but I know certain words are just like, 
this song might not fit it, but if you really listen, like, I'm always, like, if I went through my lyrics like a rap genius, I could probably be like, bro, every line is pretty much a bar somehow, but I think it's abstract. It's like, if you want to hear that, you'll hear that. Some people will just hear it and be like, oh, you sound good. I like the flow. Some people will analyze different stuff. So I think my art is layered, just like how Basquiat's was layered. Like, mm. he drew so mm. many things in one. But if you looked at it as a whole, it's just like, this is beautiful. Like, the way you think is amazing. So, yeah. Lyrical Basquiat, Damn. abstract the art. Yeah. I that's that's a guy. really cool connection, man. I, I really fuck with that. Because <laughs> I noticed. And I don't know if you ever man, watched like, this uh, documentary on YouTube. You should watch that. No, I haven't. About about, about Basquiat, yeah. Uh, I can't think of the title off top. I'm gonna be bad with it, but. Hey, all good. No, I'll yeah. check that out later. Yeah. Because yeah, I wasn't should, I wasn't that sure. hip to to Basquiat until until. I mean, recently, you know about like you know, Warhol and stuff. Like Andy yeah, Warhol. yeah, yeah. Similar to that, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, Basquiat, if I remember correctly, I mean, he 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 died real young, right? He was and he he was like late twenties when he passed, I believe. Yeah, he passed at twenty seven. Uh, they, I think they said he overdosed. The yeah. the last half of his life, like you just, I'm not gonna ruin the documentary, but yeah, just yeah, he passed at twenty seven. Yeah, yeah, and he, and, yeah, I'm excited you know, to watch. He's an inspiration to. He's been an inspiration to so many. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like our generation also growing up because, you know, as you said, he was, wasn't appreci appreciated until later. And, and, and really it means that, you know, our generation, people our age are the ones who really have appreciated him, I feel like. Um, yeah, sure. And, and so I feel that, like that connection you make, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful connection, really. Um, as Sean was saying, you know, uh, you know it's, it's, it's something that's, that's real layered, as you were saying as well, and, and really deep. So uh, really, really cool stuff, man. Really dope. Appreciate that. I feel like with COVID too, we going through this uh, a modern day renaissance. Like mm. the arts are back. Like everybody became content creators in their own right. But you see that if given that time, like I'm saying, people will come up with some dope shit. Like, mm. <laughs> people got a lot of dope ideas that we just don't do because we so stuck in the cycles of life. Like yeah, it's man. crazy. Yeah, that's absolutely. how this whole thing came about, man. Like, yeah. colossal happened over quarantine, and we were like, "Yo, we gotta." <laughs> we're so passionate about this stuff. Like, might as well. We got the time. Like, let's turn this into into something tangible, and like, let's let's get these stories from artists like you. Like, I would have never known, you know, the whole story behind your your art and the comparison to Basquiat unless you know I actually got the chance to talk with you and like get to know your music more. So, yeah, man, this is you know our idea coming to fruition. So. This is sick. Yeah. This is sick. Life ain't hard. All you got to do is try. <laughs> Leave. Leave. Amen. I, I got Amen. that from that book, too, that I was talking about, The Artist's Way. Uh, I, I should, hold on, let me Google the author, because I don't want to keep saying her. <laughs> and I don't know her the name. Artist. Yeah. Is it the, Julia, Julia Cameron? Cameron? Yeah. 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 So it's honestly a book, too. Uh, J. Cole talked about it in an interview before. But... Mm. In the introduction, she talks about a uh, leap and a net will appear. So, you know, mm. life ain't hard. All you got to do is try. Things will happen once you try. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Just got to put For yourself real. out there. Take risks. Get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Uh, That's what you got to do. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. We can, uh, you know, just to wrap it up here, we'll hit you with a few quick hitters. You know, these are ones that we dish out to all the people we interview, you know, sort of mm -hmm. classic questions that you'd like to ask the artists that you're listening to. Um, so first off, who are you listening to right now? Like, who are the three people on repeat on your playlist? Right now, I've been listening to Go-Go. <laughs> like, the new impressions hey. dropped uh, <laughs> this project, The Gift. I think it was on okay. Christmas summer around that time. I've been listening to that a lot. Okay. <laughs> like okay. a lot, a lot. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, I'm trying to think because I, I listen to that Freddie Gibbs, the gang signs mm. with him and Schoolboy. That yeah. J drop, I listen to that a lot. Yep. And I know this is going to be random, but like Biking by Frank Ocean, it's the solo Great version, song. not the one with Jay Z and Tra uh, not Travis, she's Tyler, the creator. 
I've been listening to that song a lot. I don't know why, but that song go crazy. <laughs> Frank Ocean had different, Bro. man. Yeah, he's <laughs> different level of artist. Yeah. Um, you got any got any musical influences? Any any artists that you uh, look up to that you you know base your music off of? Yeah, I got four lyric. Well, five technically, I think, because early on, my sister yeah. used to listen to a lot of Jay-Z, so I heard Jay-Z a lot, but I couldn't understand it at the time, but that, like, affected okay. me. And then I went yeah. from Jay-Z to I had a T.I. phase. I know T.I. going crazy in the news right now, but when I was young, Urban Legend, that was my shit. Yeah. <laughs> that was, I got mm. in trouble listening to Urban Le- Legend, because my father had, like, the second job. And I had, this is back when you had CD players. And I had a CD in there, but they always thought I was listening to the radio going with them. It was like, nah, I <laughs> fell asleep this one night, had the headphones in. I guess they heard what I was listening to. I got in trouble. I got the CD player taken. It was crazy. Oh, no. <laughs> but no. yeah, it was uh, more from Jay-Z to T.I. to Kanye. Had a crazy Kanye phase, yeah. rapping college dropout, all that. Yeah. And then to Wayne, to Lupe. Now that's my whole makeup for for those were the key components to my rap shit, honestly. Musical mm-hmm. shit. A whole lot of different artists, but they I feel like they was all yeah. spitting in their own, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, no doubt about that. Yeah. yeah. So is that is that your top five as well? Like if you had to pick No, nah, I won't say that's my nah, top okay. five. No. Nah. That's just, most <laughs> that's just my favorite okay. at the time. Yeah. All right. Well that then I'll ask the question. Who are your top five? All time. All time? Mm. All time. I'm not going to do no order because I feel like this can change. Of course, I'm going to put Jay in there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put Lupe in there. Got to respect this pen. Okay. Shit. Top five all time. Damn. Biggie up there. His flows was crazy. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got two more. I'm going to put Kendrick there because he a new GOAT for real. I got to give respect Back. to somebody. You mm-hmm. feel me? Back. And four. Shit. I'm going to just say Outcast, period. I put both of them together. <laughs> I'm not going to say five. Man. Yeah, shout out Outcast, <laughs> bro. Yeah. yeah. I feel like people don't remember them Outkast albums when Big Boy was spitting. Like, mm. people need to go revisit them albums. Like, they both did their job. I understand Andre 3000 had the more eclectic style, and we gravitated toward that. But as far as mm. bars, yeah, they both give it up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No doubt about that. I just listened to a, a, a Slick Rick album from like I think it was like 92 93 that had Outcast on it and I hadn't heard like an Outcast feature in a minute man and that was so hard and it was yeah. good to hear that type of that type of music again man Outcast um, crazy yeah crazy man um okay and then we'll give you the uh the big question here what's been your your favorite part of your entire career you know, you said you've been at this ever since second grade, man. You know, it could be a diss track <laughs> on PAP. That's the number one moment. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't dissing him. I was just dissing so, uh, But uh, my number one moment. Uh, I don't know. I feel like I keep creating new moments. So I'm going to go. My favorite moment, I guess, was when. I performed, it was like a little performance. And I, this was before I was telling people I was really performing. And my father got mad that I didn't tell him. And I'm just like, you know, I didn't think it was that deep, yada, yada, yada. And he ended up showing mm-hmm. up to it. So that was my favorite moment, you know. Uh, I go oh, by Coops because, yeah. you know, that's my last name. But, you know, that's, you know, that's my father's name. And I, I want to put a a legacy on my family like for real so i i I do this because of him like i i want to make him proud at the end of the day you know happy Mm. so yeah yeah that that was that's my favorite moment just just him showing up he didn't even care what i was rapping but he was like you did good i was like i guess bro you feel me (laughs) 
Oh, that's real. That's real. Love that. Yeah, love that. Well, hell yeah, bro. It's been great having you on today, man. We appreciate you coming on, giving us some of your time. You're a great character, man. Great artist. We're psyched to see what's coming up next for you. Do you have any? Do you have any projects that are in the works right now? Can we expect any, any more coons yeah. coming soon? So I want to say first off, you know it's KO season, you know, so expect just new okay. new content every month. You know, I got a project I'm working on called Elite. You know, I've been saying life ain't hard, all you got to do is try. So Elite, yeah. I'm gonna drop it sometime this year. I haven't really solidified the date, but it might be third quarter. So yeah, Leap. Oh, nope. Leap. Get excited yeah. for Leap, man. Uh, we'll be I'm ready. We'll be listening, man. man. Looking forward we'll be to listening. Appreciate that. Hey, appreciate you coming on today, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me.